All right, tech family, look who I found walking the streets of New York and invited up to come and speak to you all today. It's Andrew Mark David from AMD Tech. Welcome. Thank welcome. you, Josh. I appreciate it. And I, uh, what a great welcome here in New York City. Actually, my hometown back again. Of course, everybody knows I live in Las Vegas, but came to New York City on some business and I couldn't leave without saying hello to Josh. Yeah, so it's great to have you here today. And uh, for our viewers, and, and myself, I actually put together a couple of questions to ask you. So, okay. yeah, I'd love to know a little bit about how you did because it's honestly, guys, it's so rare that we get to speak to each other. And if you don't, if you haven't watched Andrew's channel, you should do. And he actually reviews laptops, same as myself. And as I was about to say, it's so rare that we get to kind of meet each other because there's few people to, to, to there's few people that do this. And just that we can have a chat and, and share some of the experiences, it's it's wonderful. So. With that said, um, let's get into it. Sure. So, firstly, you walked into the studio. What have you found different about this studio to say your own? Well, it's a little bit different, but I gotta say, very impressive. One of the things that I first noticed walking in is the fact that you have some really great acoustics in here. A mm -hmm. uh, little bit different than my what I've got in my studio, but very effective because you don't get a lot of reverb here, a lot of dampening, so very good environment for recording, that's for sure, and really impressive. It's so funny that he says this, guys, because I struggle like crazy with the audio. I mean, some of you guys have even commented to say, you know, it sounds terrible and I should do this, but it's nice to hear that comment no, I, because I, I it, think it, your audio. Yes, I think your audio sounds great. Uh, so next one, I gotta ask this, and my viewers would know this. Unfortunately, I struggle to produce even one video per week. I mean, these take a lot of time. You just pump out the videos like crazy. How the hell do you produce so much content? Well, that's a very good question. And even to this day, I'm not sure how I do it. It's really, really tough, especially when you balance life with your professional life. And then of course, personal life. Uh, it's hard, but I think I've got it down to a formula mm -hmm. where I know how the structure is going to be. Mm -hmm. So when a laptop comes in, for instance, I know how I'm going to attack it in terms of my allocating time. And then once I get a feel of the laptop, use it for uh, some time, obviously we want to give it a, the proper review. Mm -hmm. I know this part will be here. We can do the audio. We can do the quality of the display. We're going to get the performance numbers, the, the of so course, process. the heat. You've got, a, yeah. you've got a process, yeah. So the process is very down, very systematic, and that allows me to work a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. But I don't sacrifice the quality because I want to make sure I'm giving my audience the proper information, especially when it comes to buying uh, decisions and so forth. So I want to make sure that I am uh, thorough, but fast enough that I can turn them out, yeah. uh, where I can actually produce enough content for them to consume. Yeah. And, and as a tech YouTuber, what do you think is the best thing about being a tech YouTuber? Oh boy, that's a, that's a tough one. So I didn't go into this saying, I wanna be famous, I wanna be rich or whatever. I, I enjoy this technology. I love the, the mm. laptops and all the things that go with that. Uh, so I didn't set out to be a tech YouTuber, so to speak. I enjoy getting to meet some really great people such as yourself and some really working with some really great brands. Mm. So for me, this opens up a whole, whole world of possibilities when it comes to meeting new people mm. and getting to experience all this new technology. So that to me is the best part of being a tech YouTuber. Mm. All the other stuff is great, you know, having, yeah. be, being known and getting, uh, making some money, of course. Uh, this is a business, of course. But that's just secondary to me. Mm. To me, I enjoy the products and getting to meet all these great people. That to me yeah. is the best part. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think it's it's been amazing to meet you and just the few other YouTubers I've managed to meet. Everyone has been lovely, and it's it's been a really good experience. And you know, it's it's interesting because I feel like one of the things that gets me about it is like just the skill ceiling is so high. Mm -hmm. Like there's always more you can do. And you spoke about it before. Like you've got to kind of cut it off at some point and said enough is good enough. And I think for me, I'm always trying to like, I get excited about, oh, what what more could I do just to make it just this little bit better? And, and just right. learning, learning, you know? Um, so funnily enough, the, the one I'm learning about right now is I've never done a giveaway on the channel and I'm going to do a giveaway coming oh up. <laughs> and I know there's certain rules of the road yes. and I've got to learn about that. But that, that's yeah. a small one. But mm -hmm. yeah, just better lighting and mm -hmm. cinematography. Um, what's the worst thing? 
Worst thing about being a tech YouTuber. Wow. So the worst thing about being a tech YouTuber is not enough time in the day as far as getting to everything that comes mm. into the studio. There's a lot of great laptops you may not know of from my channel at least because I just can't get to it. Uh, I do a lot of the stuff myself, which of course may be changing here in 2023. I'm bringing on people for a team. But as far as not being able to get to everything that I want to get to, that's been very frustrating. And the mm. other part of that is working, at least with me, um, I work alone. So it can be very solitary. It can be mm. very lonely, mm. even mm. though I'm speaking to potentially millions of people. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, sometimes you just, you know, you're not speaking to anybody, really. Yeah, you're just true. speaking into the camera. So you're really working alone, especially when you're doing this independent solo. But hopefully, and the plan is, of course, in 2023, I'll bring on some more people yeah. to help out. On that note, because I actually have some folks, I was telling Andrew before, that that, that helped me out, right? And um, I have someone who sometimes helps me with some B-roll. I film a lot of the B-roll myself. I have someone who, who does a lot of the editing myself. Um, and, sorry, a lot of the editing for me. Um, I, I do still do some, but, uh, you know, one of the things that gets me about that that I think is good is it, it kind of solves that. And also for me, I feel like it, it helps motivate you as well. Mm -hmm. I find like sometimes if I don't have someone there kind of pushing me along, kind of you feed off them and it's like, oh, they're going to, you know, otherwise who knows, maybe I'll right. disappear and play a computer game or something like that. It's like it kind of keeps you motivated, which I think is a good thing as well. Absolutely. Yeah. I think Absolutely. the other thing we were talking about as well, the number of boxes oh. that we have to have, like the amount of storage to be a tech YouTuber is in Saying like you can see all these laptops behind you, and this is probably half of what's here. Um, <laughs> and this is obviously very first world problems, but both of us were talking about this before. Like we have to keep boxes of all this stuff, so it's like it, it's a lot of storage. It's a lot of storage. Absolutely. But, um, in fact, uh, it came up in a live stream I did maybe a couple of years ago, actually, when I started doing a lot of live streaming during the pandemic, mm. and people noticed on the floor it was kind of interesting. What do you have? What's on the floor there? It was a, basically a series of laptops that I've been rotating, trying to get reviews on. So we called it the laptop carpet or <laughs> the laptop tile. <laughs> it almost oh, basically crazy. covered my whole floor. Yeah, and it was getting crazy. kind of ridiculous, to be honest with you. Well, but yes. On that note, mm -hmm. okay, we're coming to the end of the year. It's been a big year. Absolutely. What is your favorite laptop of 2022? Oh, you can only pick one. This is a tough one, but I actually have a favorite one. And it's a pretty interesting one. So I reviewed the Dell Precision 5470. Mm -hmm. This is a business focused or professional mm -hmm. grade laptop, a 14 inch laptop that I call the XPS 14 on steroids. Now mm -hmm. there is no XPS 14, but if this were, if there were to be a Dell XPS 14, this is the one. Yeah. Now, one of the things that Dell was able to do was put an H series processor, a 12th gen H, H series 45 watt processor mm -hmm. in a XPS bottle body basically. Yeah. And what they were able to do was basically get enough cooling in there, mm -hmm. enough thermals that it was actually really good numbers. It had an A2000, RTX A2000 mm -hmm. GPU yeah. and a gorgeous display on it. Absolutely blew me away. It had a gorgeous graphite color and it was thin, it was light, it was everything I wanted out of the XPS if it had a 14 inch display, but Again, it was on steroids, and that to me was my favorite laptop yeah. for 2022. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. I think if I had to pick one for mm -hmm. me, and I'm about to do a review on this one, it's coming out, it's already filmed, it's all, It's probably gonna be out around the same time as this video. Um, the Legion Slim 7 oh, surprised yes. me. Mm -hmm. that, that really surprised me. I tried it first in Best Buy mm -hmm. before I got any of them in, um, and I didn't like it that much. It had a, like a sharp edge below. It just, it, like underneath the laptop, I'll talk about it in the review, but overall, you know, there's so few gaming laptops that are high right. performance that have decent control over fan noise. They're, they're not like super loud, especially in casual use. Mm -hmm. And that one just was, it, the performance was insane. It was very comfortable to use, great keyboard. So that was my one, but I haven't reviewed. I, I kind of want to try some of these precisions next mm -hmm. year. I've heard good things about them. So I want to try them, but yeah, let's, um, let's move on to the next one. So. 2023, we're about to hit it. What are you most excited for this year? Wow, so that's a good question. So a lot of great stuff we saw in 2022, I wanna see them build upon in 2023. Obviously, I wanna see what Intel has to produce with the mm -hmm. 13th gen processor. I wanna see what AMD has to do yeah. in their 7000 series. Of course, we're very interested in that. 
And then, of course, we'll see where the graphics are and all of this. As I've mentioned in many videos, I think that the integrated solution for uh, Intel needs an upgrade, the Intel Iris Absolutely. XE graphics. I've noticed it get a little bit long in the tooth, and I've mentioned that in a few videos and live streams. So I'd like to see increase in those graphics numbers as yeah. far as the integrated and, of course, the discrete graphics. We yeah. want to see that here in 2023. Mm -hmm. And I think 2023 will see a lot of gaming laptops that can do dual purpose or pull double duty in the sense not only being a great uh, gaming laptop, but your general purpose laptop to do work, get stuff done, consume media. Yeah. So I'm excited to see that segment and I plan to do more on that as well. Yeah, I, I agree, I agree. And I think with the gaming laptops, um, where I think we've struggled and I kind of touched mm -hmm. them a little on the Legion, you know, it's it's been rare that you find one that's portable enough or has fans that are quiet enough that you can still use in an office environment, right? And I know a lot of people, they like the design of the gaming laptops. They like the performance of them. So seeing them being able to do other use cases, mm -hmm. and, and some do today, but it's not quite well enough yet. And just small things as well, like I'm excited for like hopefully better speakers, like stuff oh, yeah. like that. Like the Mac has completely owned this space for since 2019, since the birth of the MacBook Pro 16, the, the new one, right, without the touch bar, the speakers have been amazing. And just just those kind of upgrades that we need to see really come out on the PC laptops that just haven't been there yet. So hopefully we'll see a little bit more progression in that space, um, in the usability space. And then I think, you know, you kind of touched on this a little bit, but and I think maybe you even answered this one, which mm -hmm. is what kind of new things can we expect from your channel in 2023? Well, I think one of the things I'm going to focus on in 2023 is not only the laptops that I've been reviewing, but I want to expand into more peripherals like mm. monitors. I want to do some more um, things that would go along with the laptops I think people are starting to look at. And in addition to that, I have a second channel, which I'm going to start to promote more and more and, and put more effort and really scale it up is my mobile with Andrew Mark David. Maybe I'm going to do some more mobile phones and smartphones, mm. tablets, which I still do, of course, on my main channel, but I want to ramp up on my second channel. So I got a lot of exciting stuff. And mm. again, like I said, bringing in people to help expand the channel, expand the yeah, reach, and then, of course... Uh, just keep doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. We're growing and we're very excited. And uh, who knows what the future can hold? You know, you never know how any of this stuff turns out. So uh, 2022 is great, but I look forward to even better 2023. Well, I think that's a, a great note to close. But yes. it's been an absolute pleasure having Andrew here. It's great to share some stories about the industry. And, you know, as I said before, just have someone who I can speak to about this crazy journey that we've all been on being laptop reviewers. Right. So wonderful to have you here. Thank you very much. I'm going to place links to his channel, well, both of them, as you said, down below, so you guys can check it out. Please do so. And as I always say, thank you very much for watching. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day, and I will catch you later.